everyone, welcome back. I wanted to do a planner update. It's been a little while since I've done one of these and I figured everything has changed, or at least a lot of things have changed, so I thought I would kind of show you what I'm using right now. And yes, I'm kind of back in multiple planners again. So the first one I wanted to start off with is kind of like my everyday catch-all, everything's in here, this is my brain sort of planner. Um, all of these are pretty much disc bound, so I'm just finding it's a good spot for me right now. They're all, I believe, for the most part, half letter. But this one, I actually just got the cover today. This is from Cloth and Paper. It's their um, agenda cover in saddle, which it's actually very pretty. Um, it's a medium brown color, and for whatever reason, it wasn't the color I was expecting, but I still like it. It looks really nice with the gold rings. These are inch and a half gold rings. Um, they're from Staples, the ARC brand, but they're the aluminum ones, which means they turn really nice. A lot of my inserts and stuff are from cloth and paper. If I don't say what they are, that's pretty much where they're from. So I do have plastic covers, some dashboard sorts of things, morning mindset, which I really do like. This, I originally got it in a subscription box quite a few months ago now. I think it was sometime this summer, but it is, a list of things that I would like to remember every day. So anyway, I have my table of contents. So this is pretty much what's in here. Goal setting, monthly, weekly, daily, notes, and reference. So we'll kind of take a look at that. I do have, this is from Poi and Hun. It's there, I think it's an A5 size for like a credit card holder or whatever they call it. I have some task cards in here, pictures of myself and my husband a few page flags for when I want to use them. Whoops. <laughs> so there's that. I have an inbox page with some sticky notes, an inbox section for if I want to write myself a quick note, and then we get to the first section which is my goal setting section. So these are my goal setting inserts. I have kind of cobbled them together a little bit just because I started using this planner kind of towards the end of the year. So I have my annual overview with my goals and then I jump in at quarter four. If you have watched videos on this before, these are kind of the standard thing. There's a spot for annual goals, quarterly objectives for the quarter, major events, and then October, November, December monthly objectives, and then top wins, what to improve. From there we get into October, and then we have weeks. So I'm kind of using the interleaved version so it's all together. So we are actually, yep, this is this current week here. And I did have some pictures of this kind of on my Instagram. Um, so if you want a closer look, you can go check those out. Um, I have a picture kind of from an angle and then one just looking at it completely filled in. So I am enjoying kind of doing this during my weekly review. It gives me an overview for the week so I can see, okay, I have an all day meeting on Tuesday. So that limits the other things that I can get done on that day. So I have that all the way through December. And let's see, there should be a, there's my December monthly pages. So I have that in there for the quarter. Then my next section are the weekly pages. Uh, this is actually, I don't know that this is cloth and paper. I think these are ones that I got as printables from somewhere that I can't remember now where I got them from. I think I've mentioned them before. Um, but this next section is my monthly section. So this is just where I'm keeping track of what's going on each month. I am using my mild liners and color coding a little bit just so I can see at a quick snapshot what I have that's going on. Um, like purple is for Bible study, anything that's gray is for the apartment association, that sort of thing. Green is kind of more personal sorts of things. So I can quickly see if I'm super busy in one area of the year, in one area of my life or not. And then I do have this all the way through next June. I figure that gives me a running start. <laughs> And then the next section I have here is my weekly sections. So this is um, a printable, I think, from Infinite, yeah, Infinite Lotus. I had this as a part of something else I purchased earlier in the year, and I went ahead and grabbed it just so I could quickly highlight paydays. 
since that's part of my job is doing payroll, that's usually important information to know. These inserts are from Cloth and Paper. I have gotten these in the sub box and I went ahead and ordered them for next year because I am enjoying kind of how they're working. So there's some duplication right now on the monthly page. I don't know if I'll continue using these monthly pages or not, if or, or if I will use them for something different. But right now, this is kind of this vertical week on two pages that I'm really enjoying. So I have a today marker here for the today. I have a half sheet also from cloth and paper with one side is just kind of like things I want to make for dinner that week, errands I need to run, and on the back side I have my shopping list. And then I do also have this bookmark. I think I got it with an ARC notebook forever ago. But I do like having both because it is super easy to just grab this with my thumb and flip to that current week. And it also allows me to kind of flip back and forth without having to pick up each of these pages individually. So I do like having kind of two ways to get to this week. Pretty much just at the top of the day, I'm putting any appointments that I have and then just listing um, things I need to do that day, usually my most important things. So, and then if I have tasks that I need to do that day that are part of my task cards. I just put this sticky note flag on there. So this is what a blank week looks like. And then again, I just put a half sheet inside of each week through the end of the month. So I also have November in here. This is a gratitude documented thing that I printed off of um, Illustrated Faith. And I actually think that I'm going to be tracking this in uh, Coco Daisy I ordered um, Daisy Dory, which is like a standard sized traveler's notebook book. I think that's where this is going to go, so this will probably come out. But I'm leaving this here now so I can find it later. But I do have November's in here. We'll see if I get December as a part of the next sub box. I don't know. But I do have the first few pages of the 2021 inserts in here just so I kind of have a quick glance at the holidays, which I do sometimes look at. So more dashboards and things from cloth and paper. And then I have daily pages here. So I only am really using these when I'm kind of busy or I'm wanting to keep a little closer track of what I'm doing. You can see I've only really used one page at this point in time. Um, but I just have a few of these in here so that if I want to use them, I can. Right now, the week is actually just perfect for me. After that, cloth and paper dashboard, and then these are just notes. Um, some of them are work notes, so I won't necessarily flip you through all of them. But I have a combination of different types of note pages in here. These are the Cornell notes from cloth and paper. Um, I have some dot grid ones. I think those are the executive ones. And then I have a few, like, ARC notebook pages in here too just because it was something I grabbed when I was taking notes at that time. This is my reference section so I have a couple more things in here so I have like my budget finance routine sorts of page flags back here. I have kind of my ideal day laid out and let me take this off. This is just like a zipper envelope here that has some random stuff in it. And then I have my budget pages back here. I'm not necessarily going to show you the one that's filled out, but I went ahead. These inserts are available in my shop. Um, they just don't have anything filled out. I went ahead and put in my information <laughs> so that I don't have to rewrite these every time I redo my budget. Even though I do my budget in pencil, um, it's nice not to have to change it. And I do sometimes keep the previous copies for reference. And then I just have a few other reference pages back here. Roll clock. These are all also from cloth and paper conversions. And then just an envelope back here that has um, some stickers and just a random notes page. I'm sure if you have watched any of my videos, you know my love for the Pentel Philography pens. And that's basically what this is in a gold color. And I was super excited to find this because normally they only have the um, like warm silver, which isn't really quite a gold, but I did find that one on Amazon. So I was excited about that. So let me put this back here. All right, so that's my catch-all planner. So 
it is very thick. Like it's inch and a half rings and it's full. Like there's not really much room that I can add stuff to this, but that's okay because it makes it easier to write on since I'm left-handed. So I don't mind it being thick. All right, so the next one I have is one that you have seen the cover before. This is a Levenger Soft Folio. And this is my home planner for lack of a better word. So right now, this is holding my moving planner. Um, there's a spot for some contacts, wish list. These are, oh, well, that's a cloth and paper, paper dashboard. This is a home decor planner. It's from Lights Planner Action. And then I have just some information from uh, Brocante Home. And then in the far back here, uh, five-year plan inserts from cloth and paper, which have not been filled out yet. <laughs> so the moving planner is one that I will probably be listing on uh, my shop fairly soon. If you are not following me on Instagram, you probably are not aware, but I have opened up a Shopify version of my store. It's so much easier to list stuff, and I actually think it's so much easier to find things on it as well, because I can list one style of insert, and then all the sizes, instead of you having to look for the style of insert and then the size that you're looking for. So, at the beginning, the version that I'm going to be listed is undated, but it'll have three months, um, so that you can... Hopefully, you're not taking more than a quarter <laughs> to move, but you never know. Um, and then there, this is a page that I put in. So there's a pre-move to do, a house prep to do. So you can just kind of keep track of lists and things like that. Um, bids and contracts. There's six places um, where you can write what it's a bid for, name, the contract, contact um, slash address of that contractor, email, phone number, when you requested the bid, when you received it, how much it was for, whether the job was completed, whether it was paid, what you paid for it, if there's any warranty notes. So for me, I thought this was a quick way to compare. So if you get two or three bids for, say, painting, you can quickly see and compare which one you choose one, and then um, I think it's helpful all along the way. I have a donate slash sell slash trash list, which some people might think is a little strange. Why don't you just donate, sell, or trash it? But my husband and I have sat down and gone through the house and figured out, okay, what things are going with us and what things are not. There are still some things that we are using, but we're not planning on taking them with us. So this gives us a place to make a note of when we get ready to move, this is not coming with us. So that's why this is here. New home wish list. So when you're looking for your new home, you have a place to kind of list and prioritize the things that are important to you. I do have a version of this for people who rent. So there's a version of this for apartments as well. There's two pages of home comparisons. So you can have a spot for your address, pros, cons, when you toured it, if you made an offer, whether it was accepted or rejected, you know, spot for putting the dollar amounts there, notes. You can rank them. So if you've narrowed it down to your top three or whatever, you can kind of put that information in there. A list of, or a spot to list all the places that you need to change your address or cancel um, or set up. So it's kind of a spot to take, you know, I need to cancel utilities here, set them up over here. This is something I need to keep, but I just need to change the address. So there's a spot for all of that. New address notifications. So kind of a spot to list all of your friends and family that you want to send on your new address to. There's a spot for move details. If you've seen my travel inserts, this probably looks very familiar. But for me, this is kind of a summary page. So when I'm getting ready to move, I have everything in one place. So how are your household items being moved? Are you moving yourself or are the movers taking it for you? When you plan to depart, when you plan to arrive. So if you're traveling, you know, across several states, you have a place to make a note of how long that trip will be how you're taking your vehicles. If you're traveling across country or maybe internationally, you may want to ship your car or you might be driving it. There's a spot for shipping information, confirmation number, agency phone number, pickup delivery, and then transportation. So your belongings have now been taken care of. How are you getting wherever you're going? 
So you have to spot for drive versus fly, depart, arrive. If you're having to rent a car for some reason, there's a spot for that. If you're needing to take a parking, um, take a shuttle to the airport, or if you need parking information, there's a place for that. And then a spot for your flight information. The next page is a budget. Very simple. Um, I didn't think the, it needed to be super complicated, but there it is good to have a place for you to kind of quickly lay out how much you think a move is going to cost you. And then I have two pages for expenses. Um, date, category, which kind of goes back to your budget description here. Um, a spot for kind of what it was that you spent, what the amount is, and then if you are being reimbursed by a company, there's a spot for you to put like a yes, no, this is reimbursable. And then I have a couple pages of box inventory. So if you're packing yourself, you have a place to make a note of like a box number. You can kind of use this in different ways. You can have a room, the contents, a box number, vice versa. I kind of left it fairly open so you could use it however you want. Um, I have another couple pages for bids and contracts. This is intended kind of for your new place where you're ending up. Um, so the original six were meant for your previous location. These are meant for your new location. And then I have a few pages of just some room information. So if you're redecorating, you can make a note of paint color for your walls, trim, ceiling. You can measure your walls so you know how much room you have. You have some a blank square so you can kind of mock up how you want to lay out your furniture. If you need to count how many windows, outlets, doors, switches you have so you know that for um, buying curtains, if you're replacing knobs in your house. There's a two columns, one for to do and then one for to buy. So this is kind of a quick and dirty way to make notes about what you want to do in each of your rooms. And there are five of those. So that's what the moving inserts look like for the most part. So like I said, there is, I have created a version for people who are renting versus people who are buying. They look kind of similar, but there are a few differences. We're hoping to buy, so I have the, the purchase version of them in here. And then I just have a bunch of note pages here at the end, because as you saw, if I need something that isn't already there, I just tuck a note page in. These are uh, from Cloth and Paper, some contacts. I figured this might be handy when we get where we're going, if there are people that I meet, neighbors that I want to make a note of whatever that might be, maybe businesses. So I have a spot for that, so it's kind of in with my moving stuff. I do have also the cloth and paper wish list tracker. So again, this might be something I use for my home. I have some information in here, but that's aimed more at the house itself when I'm looking for something. This is more for, you know, wish list for the kitchen if there's stuff that we need to buy, that sort of thing. All right. And then I mentioned this planner from Lights Planner Action. It's kind of similar to what I have going on in the moving planner, but this is aimed more at interior design. There's some outside pages as well, because this has a spot for like a move, mood board, things you want to keep, things you want to change, what your color scheme is. So I imagine that I'll probably use these a little further into it um, once I kind of figure out things that I maybe want to change. So her inserts have a spot for interior design. They have, she has a section for exterior design. So maybe you could do like front yard, backyard, that sort of thing. And then she has some for seasonal decor. So for you to kind of keep track of what you want it to look like, your color scheme, what season, the theme, your inventory, what your wish list is, and then for next year. So I kind of plan on using a combination of both of those. And then, yeah, this was just, I needed a spot for this and it didn't fit in my catch-all planner, so I just put that in there. So anyway, and then I just have random miscellaneous things tucked in the front. All right, so those are kind of the two planners I'm spending a lot of time in. This one I just pulled out. Um, this is a plum paper planner. And when you buy it, you can actually request them to not punch it. And I actually got this idea from Antonisha Lachey. 
She requested them to not punch it and then she put it on discs. I actually really like this idea. Um, so I've had this for a while. What I just ordered was a new cover and then just the monthly pages for um, November through December 2021. So November 2020 through December 2021. So this is actually a notes. For some reason I had two notes dividers. I think one came with the monthly pages and then I had one from before. So I just put a tab on it that says calendar. And then these are just very plain. It's just the month. So this is kind of my social media um, Etsy planner. I'd like to get back into using that, this for that purpose. Um, so that's kind of what I'm intending to do with it. And then these little tabs are from Erin Condren. She had made these to go with her um, monthly planners or just the notebooks. And I just stuck them on um, a little post-it note tab thing. They're very small. They're the, I think they're the metallic ones, but they were what I have and they're thinner than the, this tab here so they didn't stick out. So that's kind of what I did. So I just have each month tabbed so I can flip to it quickly. So behind the months, this was the notebook that I had from last time. So I just have a couple more of these beginning pages. It is a little strange that I have two sections that both say blog. I understand this. <laughs> I do have a website and a blog. Um, and you can see I started using this for the other option that I'm trying to use this for, which is YouTube. So it would be nice if one said vlog and one said blog, one with the V, one with the B, but I didn't have that option. So. I, these are the blog pages, so they have kind of a monthly overview, a post schedule, kind of a review, stats, brainstorming. So I do like this format. And then they have a few extra things here in the back um, for like giveaways and contests, advertising and sponsorships, none of which I'm really doing at the moment. And then there's a spot for expenses. And then income and then kind of a yearly overview. So I do have two of those. Again, one for my website, one for YouTube. That's the plan. Social media section, which I also, when I found this, I was like, why am I not using this? I really like it. So there's a posting guide, daily content calendar and hashtags, kind of a social media overview and goals. And then there's overview by month. And then you have monthly planning. So you can keep track of dates and holidays, brainstorming, things you want to promote. So there's, I think, 12 pages of that. Then there's a campaign audit. So if you're tracking some sort of a social media campaign, you can do that. <clears throat> and then there's login information, which I will probably never use because I don't want to have that floating around anywhere. And then there are meeting pages, which I ordered for another reason. Um, I don't know why there's a notes page in the middle of them. <laughs> and so I had intended to use these for meetings that I was going to. They're just in here. I don't know. So, and then I just have some actual note pages here in the back. And then they do come with a folder um, that you can tuck stuff into. And then I just put a pen holder on that so it can hold my pen. So that is kind of my social media Kendra Bork planner. And then I do also have another one that I just got. All right, so the other two planners that I have, which I have not entirely started using yet, are both um, Christmas planners. So the top one is actually from Lights Planner Action and this is one that I got quite a long time ago um, along with the stickers that came from Planners Anonymous. So she did a collab. So the stickers actually fit in. You can see I've put some of them in already because this is all black and white and then there are stickers that kind of give a little bit of color to it. So you can also color it in if you want. I don't know that I will do that. But I did like this. It's small, it's portable. However, 
after I'd ordered this, like many, many months after, I discovered that Plum Paper Planner actually also has a holiday planner. It's an A5 size, and so there's going to be a little bit of a glare. I apologize for that, so let me flip this open. So again, I asked for it unpunched, and then I put it on discs. And then you get to pick your cover, but I actually like this because it goes into a little more detail. So it's the holiday journal, and it has a gift planning section, a decor planning section, menu planning, party planning, travel planning, and then reflection. So it seems like this is something I could potentially use for several years in a row. They have a budget section here at the beginning of the gift giving section, gift ideas, quite a few pages of that, gift tracking, so if you're ordering things, you can check that, um, notes, thoughts and wishes, uh, decor planning, so again, budget for decor. Um, it's kind of broken down by area. You have storage information, so what's in different boxes. There's the menu planning section, so favorite foods and must make recipes. If you would like to budget for that, there's that section. Recipe index. And all of these pages are numbered, which I do really like. So here they do have a spot for recipes. So you can make an index and then note what page it's on. They do have menu planning. Um, so if you have like a cookie exchange you're going to or some sort of potluck, then you have a place to keep track of things that you want to take. And then like I mentioned, there's a whole bunch of holiday recipes. And after the recipes, there's also a section with a grocery list. So the other thing, if you notice, the tops of the pages are color coded, so it's kind of easy to find each section if you're just flipping through. Next section is party planning. So we have another section for budgeting and expenses. And then I think there's four room for four parties. So we have party A, brainstorming, guest list, details, to-do lists, and then thoughts and wishes. Same thing for party B, brainstorm, guest list, details, to-do lists, and then some thoughts pages. So then there's party C and then party D. So it gives you plenty of room. Oh, I lied, there's a party E, so you have five. So if you wanted to do like one each week or, you know, and then an extra one for New Year's, there's room for all of that. All right, next up is travel planning. And the other thing I like about this is it's not super Christmassy. So it can be used kind of throughout the fall season. So if you do something Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's holiday, but it's not super Christmas. So there's a spot for trips. So we have all the details, travel preparation, packing list, kind of a list of things to do while you're there, and then budget and expenses. So there are, before I tell you how many of them there are, let me double check. So there's three. So you have trips A, B, and C. Reflection. So you have your year in three words. The year in review. So there's different questions. Describe your favorite memory. What new things did you discover about yourself? What single achievement are you most proud of? Most significant effect, event that affected you this year? This is being filmed in 2020. I'm sure we can all name that one significant event. Uh, most important lesson you learned this year. Who or what are you most thankful for? What little thing did you most enjoy in every day? What advice would you have given yourself this time last year? What was the biggest problem you solved? What is one thing you would have done differently and why? What is your, and this is for upcoming year, what is your number one goal? What habits do you want to acquire or eliminate? What do you want to see, discover, explore? What skill would you like to learn? What do you feel is one word you'd like to focus on? And then there's a bunch of pages just for journaling. So if you wanted to memory keep about things that are going on or maybe you wanted to make notes about things that you would want to do differently, you could do that. Um, again, it comes with a little folder. And then I bought the Christmas stickers that kind of go along with it as well. I thought they were kind of cute. So I can make it a little more Christmassy if I want, but my impression kind of as you flip through it is it's kind of 
um, it's not super Christmassy, which if you celebrate different holidays other than Christmas, I think it could be used for that. There are a few kind of references as far as decor goes that kind of look a little Christmassy, but it's not overtly that way with like Santa Claus on every page and everything like that. So anyway, that's a look at the holiday journal. Again, this is from Plum Paper Planner and this, I had a hard time finding it. It's in the A5 notebook section and um, it's one of the notebooks that you can buy. So I really do like their option of being able to buy those unpunched because that lets me put them on rings and then I can move things around or take stuff out. And then finally, this is technically for next year. I'm still using my one for this year, but I did just get in my power sheets for next year. I was not going to buy it, but I did watch somebody's flip through and they have made some changes to the beginning section. So I went ahead and purchased it because it's not quite as floofy, I guess is the best word I can come up with, <laughs> as in previous years. So there's a few things that I know now that I can just kind of skip because I don't, that you might find value in them if you have not done power sheets before, but I know myself, so I don't know that I will need to fill out like this page. Um, like what I, when I'm 80, I want to, that sort of stuff that has not really changed in the last few years since I've been doing these. But I do like having a place to kind of keep track of goals. And I think what I am going to do this year is use my tending list a little differently because it seems like you're supposed to have it someplace and refer to it often and use it to check things off. I am really horrible about doing that. So I think what I'm actually going to do is at the end of the month, come in and fill it out because I do track a lot of this stuff elsewhere that I look at a lot more often and it's more in my face. But for me, I think this will be good because when I go in to do a quarterly renewal of my goals, I can flip back through and see how I've done and what I've accomplished. Kind of using this as a um, monthly review snapshot, I think is probably the best way to think about it. Some other changes they made, they did kind of put the refresh in with the month just before the month starts. So there is not a separate tab for that, which I don't mind. Sometimes it does make it easier to find, but I do have a bookmark that fits these O-rings. So I'll just use that to kind of mark um, where my goals are when I've re revised them. It's also not quite as... Um, guided, I guess is the best way to put it, because last year each one was themed a little bit and I didn't really find that useful. I do find the evaluation check-in helpful. What I'm saying yes to, what I'm saying no to, and my refreshed goals. So I think those are the things that I found most useful and that's what they kept and so I'm very happy with that. Um, that's just a quick snapshot of kind of what they've changed as far as that goes. Um, there are some other flip throughs like Cindy Gunter Faldo has a really good flip through where she compares the two years. So I'm not going to kind of reinvent the wheel. So I do recommend you look at her YouTube channel if you're interested. Um, they also kind of shortened up the year in review. It's just a couple of pages at the end of the year. And then the month in review kind of got consolidated a little bit, which as she pointed out, I also like, they had specific boxes for, you know, each person. I prefer that they give me a larger box because then I don't feel like obligated to find three people that I'm thankful for that month. Because sometimes they just repeat month after month and that just seems a little strange to me. So anyway, so I am using power sheets in 2021 with the most notable difference being that I am going to be using that tending list as kind of a snapshot of how I've done that month. Because I can set it up at the beginning of the month and then I can just catch up with it at the end and make a note of how far I progressed on things. Because I am mostly using 
these goal setting pages in my catch-all planner, the ones that are in my shop, because I find these a lot more actionable where I take my monthly objectives, break them down by week and then by day. So I know if I'm doing things to kind of move stuff forward. So this is where I usually am and I find that a lot more helpful. For those who are curious, I am still in Notion. Um, I know <laughs> a long time ago I had promised a walkthrough of Notion. However, that setup is still fluctuating quite a bit and so if I had filmed a video at that time, it would look nothing like what it looks like now. So I'm kind of waiting until I get it kind of a little more stabilized because it does seem to be changing quite a bit. So. Anyway, that's a lot of planners, <laughs> but I am keeping a few things separated, like my work for my blog channel, like my work for my YouTube channel, and my blog, and my social media. I have that kind of in its own area. I have a spot for holiday planning, a spot for moving. This is nice because I can just grab this and I know all of my brain stuff around moving is in here and then this is just the rest of my life. Um, honestly, if I could fit these pages in here, I probably would have, but I am out of room. <laughs> so, and this gives me more room to expand because these discs actually still have room on them. So I could still add stuff and I probably will still add stuff in there. So hopefully that was helpful. A quick snapshot at kind of what I'm doing and all of that. And there will probably be more information on um, some of the things I've talked about, i.e. moving, when I have them. But that's still very up in the air at the moment. But it's close enough that I can start writing things down. We'll put it that way. So I'll probably have another video sometime in the future, maybe on kind of what's going on and how I'm handling all of that once I get my head wrapped around what's going on. Anyway, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!